Dextromethorphan. If you're looking for a drug that can knock that cough away, but also push your sanity back when you become too reliant on it, that would be Dextromethorphan, commonly known as DXM. This drug is one of the most widely used cough suppressors found in over 120 over-the-counter medications. It's extremely helpful at keeping that cough away from the party, like a no-crossing tape that keeps that phlegm away, but too much of it can turn your life into a psychedelic 70s rock concert. OTC medications with DXM are often used recreationally for their euphoric effects. Using this drug well over the required dosage can make you experience hallucinations and allow you to melt into your couch while your mind dozes off on a psychedelic trip. But this trip can be more than you bargained for because it can make you feel like you're walking on the moon or stumbling into walls. So if you use this drug too much, you're going to have trouble with anything requiring coordination, like walking, talking, or even breathing properly. This can come at the worst time, especially when you're in the middle of an activity that requires you to stay alert. DXM overdose risks are another serious concern. Yes, it does make your cough disappear, but your breath as well. So it's a breathtaking experience that you should avoid. Diphenhydramine. Now, you may have diphenhydramine stashed away if those allergies suddenly hit, especially when you're at an all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. But while you may think this over-the-counter antihistamine seems harmless, it can be more dangerous than an allergic attack. This drug is a first-generation antihistamine, which means it not only tackles allergies, but also enjoys the side gig of causing drowsiness. It blocks histamine receptors in your brain, which might sound helpful until you realize your brain also needs those receptors for things like keeping you as coherent and alert as a vampire in the middle of the night, especially if you have work deadlines you need to finish. Too much of this drug can also turn your body into a circus act, causing hallucinations, delirium, and confusion. Your mind becomes more of a high-flying act, where your acrobats are your thoughts and the clowns are your coordination skills. Both your mind and body would be acting funny the entire time. You're going to be looking and acting like a zombie, unable to talk in complete sentences or walk in a straight line. Diphenhydramine can also mess with your heart and cause palpitations, which just makes everything worse when you're already in a daze. So it's best to use it only when allergy season is upon you. Acetaminophen. You may know this guy by the name Tylenol, which is one of the most popular OTC drugs for dulling pain and reducing fever. It's the superstar of the pain relief world. But when it comes to recreational use, acetaminophen becomes less of a LeBron James and more of a bench warmer. Your liver processes this drug. When you take it in a regular dose, the liver can handle it just fine, like a typical day at the office. But if you decide to go wild with doses, it's like giving your liver a mountain of paperwork and expecting it to finish by lunchtime. The liver can get overwhelmed, and that's when things start going sideways. You see, the liver is not just a filter, but is also a lounge for processing various substances. When it gets overloaded, it can get cranky and start breaking down. This can result in acute liver failure, which is like throwing your body's internal systems into a chaotic riot with no police to calm the situation down. Acetaminophen is also quite sneaky. It's often mixed into other medications, so you might not realize you're doubling up on it. Imagine going to a buffet and discovering your plate already loaded with your least favorite dish. Except you're looking at acetaminophen, and it's not exactly a treat. So while acetaminophen can be an excellent ally for pain relief, you may want to avoid using using it like a tic-tac if you don't want your body going crazy. Pseudoephedrine. On the surface, pseudoephedrine is an over-the-counter drug that acts like a friend who always has tissues when you have a cold. But it can also be a backstabber with a dark side that can make you wish you just ate your mother's cure-all chicken soup instead of this drug. If your body were a car, this drug is like a turbocharger for your engine because it can rev things up to the highest level. It works by narrowing your blood vessels to reduce swelling and congestion, which sounds helpful, especially if you have a a terrible cold. However, when you crank the engine too hard with this drug, you might overheat or, in this case, overstimulate your heart. So when you take too much pseudoephedrine, your heart will feel like it's on five shots of espresso. This can affect your blood pressure and sleep schedule, making it unstable. High doses can cause insomnia and jitteriness and even make you feel like you've replaced your blood with Red Bull. But there's more to it. This drug can also be a bit of a troublemaker in the wrong hands because it's a key ingredient in the production of methamphetamine, making it a favorite target for those looking to cook up something illegal. So while you're trying to clear your sinuses, someone else might be cooking up a storm with it. Loperamide. Let's say you've had too much to eat during Taco Tuesdays, and your gut decided it didn't want to cooperate with your busy work schedule. While sitting at your desk, your tummy starts getting gassy, signaling it's about to explode. That's where loperamide comes in as the superhero who saves you from a bad case of diarrhea. But there's also an evil side to this over-the-counter drug, known by its all Ego, 
or brand name Imodium, this drug helps you stay calm and composed instead of rushing to that bathroom like you're in the middle of an Olympic event. But overdosing on this stuff can make things more chaotic than a clogged toilet. Your intestines are like a superhighway with a traffic cop. Now, Loperamide manages the traffic together with the cop by using traffic lights, but too much of it will make that cop go into break mode, allowing all the undigested food in your system to clog. This can lead to a very unpleasant condition called toxic megacolon, where your colon gets so stretched out it's like an overinflated balloon. You see, too much of this drug can start blocking not just your intestines, but also your brain's signals. It can cross into your brain if you take way too much, and when it does, it's like inviting a strict librarian to a wild dance party, causing it to try to silence everything, including important brain functions. This can cause severe problems like slowed breathing, extreme drowsiness, and even coma. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen is your knight in shining bottle because it's always ready to save you from pain and inflammation. It's the pill that says, I got this, when you've got a throbbing headache or sore muscles. But even this knight has a dark side you'd only see if you go overboard with it. Like any other, this OTC drug is ready to take down pain when it attacks. But too much of it can lead to stomach pain because ibuprofen no longer cares whether something is dangerous or not. So your stomach lining is a protective barrier against the wild and crazy world of your digestive system. Regular ibuprofen use can be like sending a wrecking ball through that barrier to weaken your stomach lining. This can lead to ulcers and stomach bleeding, which are both incredibly uncomfortable and can lead to more severe conditions. To make matters worse, ibuprofen can put some serious pressure on your hard-working kidneys. Overuse can cause them to become overwhelmed, leading leading to potential kidney damage. Long-term use of this drug can also mess with blood pressure and increase the risk of heart problems, making it clear that it's basically a painkiller and not a heart healer. Too much ibuprofen might result in a heartfelt situation that your body can't stomach. Chlorophenuramine. If caffeine had an evil twin brother who does the exact same opposite of what it does, that would be chlorophenuramine, an OTC drug that's ready to turn you into a human sloth. It's like putting a do not disturb sign in your brain. Chlorophenuramine Chlorophenuramine is an antihistamine, and it's fantastic at blocking the body chemical that causes itchy eyes and runny noses. But there's a catch. It's also the drug version of someone who suddenly falls asleep in the middle of a conversation. It can put your brain into snooze mode. If you're looking to use it recreationally, especially if you want to spend an entire day as a couch potato, you might want to rethink that plan. Chlorophenuramine can turn your brain into mush, making you an unfunctional slob. You're now basically a human bedtime story, because all you can think of is taking a nap. A lot of recreational users also like mixing chlorpheniramine and alcohol to get that ultimate relaxing high. But this can turn into a dangerous explosion of drowsiness and impaired judgment. Combining these two is asking for a snooze fest that would make you hibernate longer than a bear during winter. Kava. Kava is like a tropical vacation in a cup, minus the beach, the sun, and the sand in your swimsuit. It's a root-based, over-the-counter drug from the South Pacific, famous for its calming effects. But before you start imagining yourself swinging on a hammock with a kava drink in hand, you should know that too much of it can lead to a bad vacation. It might be nature's taking the edge off drink, but it's going to put your liver in a tough spot because kava can push it to its limit. High doses or prolonged use can lead to liver damage or even failure. So instead of a hard-working hero, your liver turns into a disgruntled villain out for revenge on your body. Then there's the case of kava dermopathy or kava face, which isn't a new Instagram filter. Imagine your skin deciding to dress up as a scaly lizard for Halloween, but forgetting to change back afterward. That's basically what Kava Face makes you look like. This drug also loves to mess with your motor skills, making you feel like you're in a mere funhouse where everything ends up looking funny. Your balance might take a vacation, making you trip on your shadow while walking. Meclizine. Think of Meclizine as that medication that keeps you going if you want to make the most of your Disneyland trip without throwing up last week's breakfast. It prevents motion sickness and dizziness, which can be handy for that roller coaster ride, but some people use it recreationally to go to La La Land, where things can get a bit too euphoric. Abusing meclizine can plunge you into a nap so deep that you start dreaming about the left being right and up being down. It causes extreme drowsiness, rivaling a sloth on a lazy Sunday afternoon. So it's probably the worst drug to take if you want to enjoy your weekend, unless your idea of a good time is staring at the wall all day long. In an ironic twist, this drug can actually cause dizziness. Yes, a drug meant to prevent dizziness can cause it if you overdo things. Meclizine works by blocking certain signals in your brain that contribute to motion sickness, but since it's messing with those brain signals, too much of it also causes dizziness. Meclizine can also leave you looking like a raisin. This drug can leave you so dry that it looks like you haven't had a drop of water in months.
months. When you pair that with all its other effects, you'll soon realize it's not worth the euphoric buzz. Why Fenison? If you had a magic potion that could miraculously clear out that pesky mucus, that would be Guaifenesin. But like all magic potions, it comes with a catch. Imagine chugging it down like you're drinking Gatorade in the middle of a football game, it could end up sidelining you instead. Now, taking high doses of this drug can make you feel you are floating on a cloud because of its euphoric effects, but it also makes you feel like you're a toddler still trying to learn how to walk. It makes you feel dizzy, nauseous, and uncoordinated. Instead of giving you a chill high, it keeps you in that bathroom stall because you can't stop vomiting. This drug's main job is to thin mucus, so if you take too much, your body might decide that mucus clearance is its top priority. You could find yourself with a nose that won't stop running or a cough that just won't quit. That means you'd be going through an entire box of tissues in just a few hours. Guaifenesin is a helpful drug for clearing up congestion when used as directed, but if you want to use it for a good time, you're better off sticking to safer, more enjoyable activities. We might be suffering from some sort of internet congestion because we're not getting enough subscriptions. You can help us by subscribing to our channel and joining our Discord. Oxymetazoline. You've got a stuffy nose, which makes breathing feel like you're catching your breath underwater. It's more clogged than a New York subway during rush hour. Here comes Oxymetazoline, the nasal spray drug that almost automatically clears up your nose. But using it also comes with a slight euphoric effect that's going to tempt you to use it recreationally. Now, that's a road you don't want to go down. If you use your nasal spray too often, your nose becomes like a spoiled child, demanding more and more attention. It's called rebound congestion, and it's like your nose throwing a tantrum because it's now dependent on the spray. Instead of just using it when you're genuinely congested, your nose starts acting like it's constantly in distress, craving that sweet oxymetazoline fix. You now get caught in a nasal loop of doom. The more you spray, the more congested you feel, leading you to spray even more. Before you know it, your nose has become a full-blown drama queen, refusing to breathe normally without you using a nasal spray. Pretty soon, stuffiness becomes your nose's default setting. In extreme cases, overuse of oxymetazoline can lead to tissue damage in the nose. You could end up with a nose that looks like it's auditioning for a role in a horror movie because of its deformity. So if a lifetime of stuffiness in your nose isn't enough to convince you to put that nasal spray down, maybe having an ugly nose will. Orlistat. Orlistat is that OTC medication that can be handy if you can't put the fork down. It's designed to help with weight loss by blocking the absorption of fats from your diet. This drug is basically your body's fat police, kicking out about 30% of the fat you eat before it can make itself at home in your body. But you might be wondering where all that fat goes. Well, it's not a graceful exit. The fat that Orlistat keeps out of your body doesn't magically disappear. Instead, it goes straight to your intestines, making you leak the fat out of your butt. That's the infamous anal leakage, which can lead to an uncontrollable oil spill in your underwear that could rival an environmental disaster. If you thought wearing white pants was risky before, now it's a full-blown gamble. Then there's the Orlistat surprise, where the sudden urge to go to the bathroom can hit you like a lightning bolt. Picture this, you're out with friends, enjoying a lovely meal, when suddenly your stomach starts making noises that could be mistaken for thunderstorms. You dash to the nearest restroom, only to find that your body has turned into a wet poop factory. This can strike any moment, making you want to go out only when a working toilet is nearby. Using Orlistat without a doctor's supervision can also cause your body to miss out on essential vitamins, like A, D, E, and K, because when the fats leave the party early, they take the vitamins with them. This means you could end up feeling tired and moody. So if you don't want to carry extra underwear, toilet paper, and a bottle of vitamins wherever you go, it's best to stick to a strict diet instead of taking too much Orlistat. Disclaimer, this video's purpose is purely informative and we strongly advise to stay away from any type of illegal and harmful drugs. N-bomb. You'd think that it's a word that got your friend canceled on social media, but N-bomb is a synthetic drug that can cancel your evening plans in a minute. Short for 251 NBOME and known for its street name Smiles, N-bomb can give you that explosive party you're looking for if your idea of a good time is an unexpected trip to the emergency room. It's a dangerous drug that comes with euphoria pumped up to the highest level. This drug is a hallucinogen, which means that it makes you have visions of that demonic nun you saw in that last horror movie. In most cases, you'd be seeing nightmarish visions instead of those subtle sights and sounds that some hallucinogens have, turning your regular evening into an intense and terrifying journey. While some people may like their hallucinations a bit on the intense side, the problem with N-bomb is that it's so potent it comes with chaotic side effects. These include severe agitation, delirium, and even a complete breakdown of one's grasp of reality. One day, you're just chilling at home, but 
one pop of this drug can turn that into a bungee ride of emotion and visions. These effects make N-bomb potentially life-threatening. What makes it even more dangerous is that it's often accessible online and on the streets. You might think you're just getting a harmless substance, but accidentally going to the nearest hospital instead. Methadone. You probably have that overachieving sibling who not only gets straight A's, but is also a star athlete. But underneath that perfect exterior lies someone whose sanity could snap at any moment, especially if the stress starts piling. Methadone is a lot like that because it's initially good, but can explode when it builds up. This drug was developed to be a substitute for heroin to help people get off heroin and other opioids by easing withdrawal symptoms and cravings. Think of it as the lesser evil of this drug family, as it provides a more controlled withdrawal from the more serious stuff. That makes it sound like you're dealing with a drug that probably can't do anything wrong, but it's more of a double-edged sword that can hurt just as much as it can help. It's got a long half-life, which is a fancy way of saying it hangs around in your system longer than One Piece has been on television. This can be both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it means it works longer, reducing the need for frequent dosing. On the other hand, if you're not careful, it can build up in your system like leftovers in your fridge. The dosage game is crucial with methadone. Too little, and it's as ineffective as if you were using a squirt gun to put out a fire. Too much, and you're facing the risk of overdose, causing breathing problems that can kill you. Once it builds up in your system, you won't know you've already exceeded the dosage limit until you gasp for air. Ritalin, methylphenidate. If you're looking for a drug that's like a turbo boost for your brain's engine, then that's where Ritalin, also called methylphenidate, comes in to push your mind past its breaking point, if you're not careful with how you use it. This drug is supposed to be a prescription for people with ADHD. Let's say your mind is a chaotic circus, with clowns juggling flaming torches while elephants dance on a tightrope. Ritalin comes in like a ringmaster, whipping the circus into a well-organized performance. It will help you focus by enhancing the brain's ability to pay attention. But there's more to that. Just like you wouldn't want your circus elephants to start juggling chainsaws, you wouldn't want to misuse Ritalin. When taken without medical guidance, it can turn from a brain-taming ringleader into a high-wire act of risk. Overuse or misuse might lead to heart palpitations, insomnia, or even that dreadful side effect of becoming a hyperactive version of yourself. Now, the addiction potential is also always lurking somewhere behind the curtain, waiting to strike at the perfect time. While this synthetic drug can be helpful if you want to focus on finishing that homework, misuse can lead to dependency because you wouldn't want your brain flying all over the circus tent like an acrobat. Modafinil. Modafinil sounds like something you'd order at a fancy coffee shop. I'll have a grande modafinil with an extra shot of espresso, please. Oddly enough, it has effects that make it look like a supercharged Americano from the nearest Starbucks. While it sounds good that this drug can boost your brain, it's not all sunshine and productivity. Modafinil is a synthetic stimulant that makes coffee look like water. It was initially developed to treat narcolepsy, a condition where you have sudden and uncontrollable episodes of deep sleep during the day. It graduated from being an anti-sleep drug to become the secret weapon of overworked professionals who need to pretend they're functioning like normal humans. But there's a dark side to this drug. Let's say your brain is a sports car and modafinil is its high-octane fuel. That sounds great, but pouring too much premium gas into your body can ramp up wakefulness and alertness. Instead of resting well and dreaming about your next vacation, you're up at 3 a.m. working on a spreadsheet. That sounds productive until you realize you've forgotten how to shut down and are on a caffeine-fueled robot of endless tasks. That's not the only thing that should make you worry about this drug. You might experience headaches, nausea, or insomnia, basically everything you thought you'd avoid by taking the pill. It's always best to stick to a healthy life without taking any bad substances. Nafarone. Nafarone is like the new guy on the block who was invited to the party, but instead of bringing chips and salsa, he brings chaos and trouble. This drug is a synthetic stimulant that suddenly popped up on the scene, turning into a real troublemaker because it's like a mix between cocaine and meth, but with the attitude of a spoiled celebrity who thinks rules don't apply to them. It's notorious for its unpredictable effects, sort of like you ordered a surprise gift that could very well be anything, from a simple gift card to a bomb that's ready to explode the moment you open the package. Using nafarone will make you feel random effects, such as palpitations, paranoia, and hallucinations. It's like your brain is skydiving. You'll feel 30,000 feet high up in the sky when you're high, but when you're low, you're basically ready to crash to the ground. The real twist is that its side effects aren't just about wild mood swings. Its physical side effects can be pretty intense. You're looking at serious stuff, like heart problems or even seizures. If you thought you were going for a chill experience, 
experience, Naparone might actually make you feel like you're on a rocket instead, blasting off into space. This explains why this drug is now on the wrong side of the wanted list of synthetic troublemakers, and it's best to stay away from it, as well as anything else harmful. DCK Dichloroketamine Let's say that there's a family reunion of drugs related to ketamine, and DCK comes in as the flashy cousin who's always up for the riskiest adventures. While ketamine has been known for its uses in medicine, DCK is that guy who gets too involved in the party's experimental side. DCK, or dichloroketamine, is known for its psychedelic properties and dissociative effects. That means it makes you feel like you're floating in space or trapped in a realistic video game. Instead of enjoying the party, you might end up in a maze of your thoughts, where everything is a bit too vivid and your sense of reality decides to go on vacation. You see, it's been known to cause hallucinations, intense dissociation, and a general feeling that reality is taking a break to give way to wild imaginations. This makes it a risky substance, especially if you're not keen on spending hours trying to figure out if your hands are real or just part of a very elaborate dream. However, the real problem is that DCK can lead to many unpleasant side effects, mainly if you use it without proper medical supervision. It can potentially cause dizziness, nausea, and headaches. At worst, you might feel confused or your coordination gets impaired, making you unable to concentrate on what you're doing. 4-MEC 4-methyl-ethcathinone 4 mech is like the Frankenstein monster of drugs, because a chemistry teacher seemingly got too excited mixing different chemicals to come up with this synthetic substance. It's like several drugs were combined with adrenaline and an energy drink to create this unholy synthetic substance that's going to make you regret ever getting near it. The drug's main claim to fame is its ability to give you an intense rush of energy and euphoria. Think of it as the ultimate let's party like it's 2012 drug, but with a potential side of severe anxiety, agitation, and hallucinations. It can sound weirdly fun, but it's also so dangerous that it makes you feel like you're juggling with knives while partying. 4 mech can be incredibly addictive and has the potential for serious side effects. Imagine your brain throwing a wild rave you didn't plan for and can't stop. You're going to experience things like increased heart rate, high blood pressure, and a potential mental meltdown. It's like your body's way of saying, hey, maybe we should have just stayed home tonight. It's also somewhere in the legal gray area of drugs. In many places, it's considered a controlled substance because, you know, it's not exactly known for being the safest drug. That means that there's a chance you'll be partying the night away on the dance floor or in a jail cell. 2CB. No, it's not the name of a robot from Star Wars. It's a synthetic drug that's a distant but intense relative of the psychedelic family. This chemical cocktail has been described as a blend of ecstasy and LSD. It makes you feel like you're handed a pair of rainbow-colored glasses and told, go ahead, see what the world looks like. This turns everyday objects into colorful, squishy versions of themselves, which you might think is a good idea if you're into that sort of thing. It's also known for enhancing tactile sensations, making fuzzy socks feel like you're walking on clouds. But here's when things can get dirty in the worst way possible. This drug can be unpredictable. Sometimes it makes you feel happy and euphoric, but there are times when it's going to hit you like a truck, making you want to take yourself to the emergency room. It's a game of Russian roulette involving drug effects. You wouldn't know what to expect, but you're likely to feel like crap because of its unpredictability. Additionally, since 2CB is a synthetic drug, its quality and effects can vary. It's like buying a mystery box from a shady corner store. You could get something extraordinary, or you might get something that twists your senses and takes you on a dangerous psychedelic trip your mind won't recover from. If you want to know more about the dangers of 2CB and other synthetic drugs, you can join our Discord where we dive deep into these subjects and and share insights with like-minded people. Ethylone. If you're in the middle of a family event, then ethylone is that long-lost cousin who shows up uninvited and befriends everyone before airing out the entire family's dirty secrets. It's a member of the intactogen family of drugs, which wants you to feel all fuzzy and friendly, but with a side of trouble. Now, ethylone is a part of a group of drugs known as bath salts, not the kind you use to relax in a bubble bath. These synthetic drugs are some of the wildest children of the drug world, World, in the sense that they're overdosed on caffeine and are incredibly hyperactive, unpredictable, and moody. 
Basically, it's the type of drug you definitely don't want to hang around your neighborhood. When ethylone enters your system, it does so in a way that's sneakier than Michael Jackson's smooth criminal. It's an undercover agent, usually passed off as something harmless, but eventually puts you on an emotional roller coaster ride full of euphoric feelings. It makes you feel more connected with the world around you, but likes to hide serious health risks. You might experience rapid heart rate, high blood pressure, and anxiety, which is like your body's way of saying, hey, this is not the kind of party I signed up for. Sometimes you might even have hallucinations, which means ethylone is pretty much the type of guy who turns the lights off and makes everyone question reality. Now you understand why no one wanted to invite him to the family reunion. Bromo Dragonfly A ride on Bromo Dragonfly isn't like how it's played out in House of the Dragon, where characters get to ride mythical beasts. Instead of breathing fire, this synthetic drug messes with your brain in ways you didn't think were possible. This drug is a psychedelic that's part of the larger family of substances known as phenethylamines. These are the same family of compounds that gave us your garden variety hallucinogens like LSD and mescaline. But Bromo Dragonfly is a bit of a troublemaker. It's super potent, like in a please don't try this at home kind of way. Imagine your brain is a light switch and Bromo Dragonfly is the person who keeps flipping it on and off while you're trying to watch your favorite show. That's kind of what it does. It loves to distort your senses, throwing your sense of time out the window and making everyday objects look like they've come straight out of a messy abstract painting. You might feel like you're walking through a melting clock or talking to a talking refrigerator. But the worst part is that this drug can have some nasty side effects. It can give you extreme anxiety, paranoia, and even hallucinations that make you wish you were stuck in a boring lecture instead. Worst of all, because it's so potent, even a small misstep in dosage can lead to a trip that's more like a journey through a dark and unsettling nightmare. Doc. Two, five, 5-dimethoxy-4-chloroamphetamine. This is probably the only doc that you certainly don't want to visit. It comes with a really long name, 2,5-dimethoxy-4-chloroamphetamine, but we'd rather call it Don't Open the Curtains, because DOC, D-O-C, is the type of drug you'd wish should just stay behind the curtains forever. It's a psychedelic drug that can make your reality do somersaults and cartwheels using different groovy and trippy visions, but it's much more potent than any other psychedelic. Think of it as the class clown of the psychedelic world which is already a class full of clowns. When you take it, your perception of time and space might start acting like a disco ball on overdrive. Things stretch, squish, and twist into shapes in a way that could make jelly look like a rock. You could find yourself staring at a wall and suddenly wondering if it's actually a portal to another dimension or just really bad wallpaper. The dosage can also be a bit of a guessing game. Too much of it and it's straight to a real doc for you. Its effects can be unpredictable, possibly leading to extreme anxiety or hallucinations that make you question your very existence. The worst part is that doc can last anywhere from 8 to 20 24 hours, so you might find yourself in an endless loop of confusing reality with your imagination. Now you better wish that an apple a day can really keep Doc away. Thalidomide. You're in the 1950s and you're constantly suffering from morning sickness because of pregnancy. That's when you found out about thalidomide, the miracle drug that could make morning sickness a thing of the past. But there's a reason why women nowadays no longer pop a thalidomide pill like a Tic Tac. This drug was developed during the 1940s, during World War II, by Nazi scientists. A German pharmaceutical company brought in the same scientists during the 50s to complete the drug's development and make it readily available to the public. And it was never tested on pregnancy because the Nazis probably had a shortage of pregnant women in their concentration camps. The drug was actually so potent that it could penetrate the placenta, the organ that grows in the womb during pregnancy. That means that thalidomide was making its way to the fetus, affecting its development and causing severe birth defects. If your mom took this drug during the 50s, you'd probably be living life in hard mode right now because you'd be missing a few limbs and have serious health problems. Thousands of other babies were born with the same malformed bodies during the 50s, leading people to wonder what was going on. Scientists eventually traced the problem to thalidomide, leading to a global scandal that forced every country to ban the drug during the early 60s. It also became the reason companies are now forced to use strict testing procedures when developing new drugs. Fenfen 
Fenfluramine and Fentermine, or Fenfen, was the tag team champion duo of the weight loss division during the 1990s. This combination of two drugs worked like a dream if you wanted to take a few inches off your waist. The problem was that it had a tragic backstory that led to its disappearance from the pharmaceutical world. Fentermine is a stimulant, sort of like a diet-focused cousin of amphetamines that helps curb appetite. On the other hand, Fenfluramine works by boosting serotonin levels, making people feel fuller. Combined, these two seem like the ultimate power couple for weight loss. It was basically the Hollywood magic pill for shedding pounds. But things went south when Fenfen was causing severe damage, all while you were celebrating your rapid weight loss. Fenfluramine was a literal heartbreaker because it could mess with the heart valves, leading to a condition known as valvular heart disease. Valves that are supposed to regulate blood flow in the heart tightly suddenly became floppy and leaky. Some users also developed pulmonary hypertension, a dangerous increase in blood pressure in the lungs. As reports of these severe sometimes fatal heart problems started rolling in, Fen Fen got banned. Rofacoxib if you went through a hard day at the gym with your joints and muscles aching, Rofacoxib, sold under the brand name Viox, was your go-to fix. At one point, it was the star of the painkiller world because it reduced inflammation and relieved arthritis pain better than a day of soaking in a hot spring. Unfortunately, its side effects were too much of a heart killer. Rofacoxib is a COX-2 inhibitor designed to be easier on your stomach than other painkillers like ibuprofen and aspirin, which can cause ulcers with long-term use. This drug did its job well until people found out that it didn't play nice with your cardiovascular system. It seemed to mess with the balance between substances in the body that manage blood clotting and blood vessel dilation. These effects eventually led to more serious heart problems, such as heart attacks or strokes. Rofacoxib may have stopped your body aches, but it could also stop your heart. Of course, if you had body pain, you'd probably prefer getting an ulcer from ibuprofen instead of dropping dead like a fly because of Rofacoxib. When the data about the drug's heart attack-related issues came out, the company behind Rofacoxib Rofacoxib pulled it out of the market because it was too risky and too much of a legal liability. Cisapride. Imagine your digestive system as a highway that allows food to pass smoothly, but acid reflux and other gastrointestinal issues can sometimes cause a traffic jam. This wasn't a problem for Cisapride, which speeds up food movement through your system. The problem was that its side effects were a bit like a wild ride through a freeway with no speed limits because it was dangerous. Cisapride was unfortunately capable of stopping your heart. The drug messed with the heart heart's electrical system, which is responsible for keeping that all-important rhythm steady. It's like an EMP shockwave that suddenly fries every electronic system it hits. Specifically, it could cause a condition called QT interval prolongation, which sounds like something you'd need a math degree to understand. Still, it means that it messed up the timing of the heartbeats. In some unfortunate cases, this could lead to deadly heart conditions, like torsade de pont. Cisapride was often prescribed alongside other medications, and it had a nasty habit of not playing well with others. It would interfere with the liver's ability to break down certain drugs, leading to a dangerous buildup in the body. Imagine a party where one guest keeps hogging the dance floor. Cisapride did that by not letting the liver do its job. Phenylpropanolamine Phenylpropanolamine, or PPA, was once popular in many over-the-counter cold remedies and weight loss products. It's that famous jack-of-all-trades capable of hitting two birds with one stone. PPA worked by shrinking blood vessels in the nasal passages, which helped clear up a stuffy nose and acted as an appetite suppressant. So it was the go-to fix for sniffles and snack control. You were unclogging your nose while helping you win the biggest loser. However, studies began to show that PPA could increase the risk of hemorrhagic stroke, which is a fancy term for bleeding in the brain. It's like your brain couldn't handle the drug's two-in-one effects and decided to spring a leak. This risk was more common in women under 50, but it wasn't something you'd want to gamble on, even if you're a 90-year-old man who wants to die a natural death instead of a bleeding brain. In the late 1990s, an extensive study called the Hemorrhagic Stroke Project came out, and the findings confirmed the link between PPA and stroke. The FDA didn't want people to play Russian roulette with their cold medicine, so in 2000, they advised consumers to stop using PPA products. After all, you wouldn't want a side effect of bleeding brain together with your decongested nose and weight loss. Subutramine if you wanted a drug that tells your brain to put the fork down, Sibutramine acted as your personal fitness coach. It was once a big shot in the weight loss industry, popping up in the early 2000s as the go-to solution for shedding those extra pounds. It worked by messing with neurotransmitters in the brain, specifically serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, making you feel fuller for longer and less inclined to raid the fridge at midnight. It sounded like a dream come true for dieters, but it could also send you to the ER in a hurry. As with many too-good-to-be-true scenarios, 
Subutramine came with a hefty dose of side effects, including a severe risk of increased blood pressure and heart rate. Sure, you'd have the body of a Victoria's Secret model, but at the cost of having the heart problems of a 700-pound obese dude. This could eventually lead to heart attacks and strokes. Subutramine was also the kid at the playground who didn't like playing with other drugs. It could interact poorly with antidepressants, migraine meds, and blood pressure treatments, creating a risky cocktail of potential side effects. Plus, it was linked to a long list of unpleasant symptoms like headaches, dry mouth, and constipation. Diethyl Stilbestrol you were in the 1940s, when people were very concerned about pregnancy complications, especially when people were dying left and right during the war. Here comes diethyl stilbestrol, or DES, a miracle drug that promises to prevent miscarriages and other pregnancy problems. It turned out to be too good to be true, eventually turning it into a big problem in the drug world. DES is a synthetic form of estrogen, a crucial hormone during pregnancy. The idea was that by boosting estrogen levels, this drug would help keep pregnancies safe and sound. Unfortunately, DES became more of a villain instead of a hero. It took a few decades, but researchers eventually linked DES to a series of severe health issues, not just in the women who took it, but also in their children and even their grandchildren. So instead of an inheritance, you'd pass on DES side effects for at least two generations. Taking DES could also give you a slightly higher risk of developing breast cancer, but the real shocker was what happened to daughters born from DES use. If your mom used this drug, you'd have a higher risk of developing a rare type of cancer called clear cell adenocarcinoma of the vagina and cervix. Terfenidine. Imagine getting the sniffles during allergy season, struggling to breathe, and sneezing every second. Terfenidine used to be the drug you'd take to treat those pesky allergies, but it eventually found itself on the list of banned medications because of its dangerous side effects. Terfenidine blocks histamines, the sneaky culprit behind sneezes and itchy eyes. Terfenidine seemed like a miracle worker because, unlike other antihistamines, it didn't cause drowsiness. This made it perfect if you didn't want to have the strong urge to nap while busy at work, but the drug played a deadly dance with your heart's rhythm. Usually, the heart beats in a well-timed, synchronized pattern. However, terfenidine could disrupt this rhythm, leading to a potentially life-threatening condition where your heart becomes chaotic and starts ticking oddly like a broken clock. It can lead to fainting, seizures, or even sudden death if not treated promptly. The problem popped up when terfenidine decided to skip the liver's detox drive through before cruising into the bloodstream. Typically, your liver uses enzymes to break down the drug into a chill, safe form, but if something interferes with this function, like certain medications, terfenidine could build up in your body and reach dangerous levels. Rosaglitazone Let's say rosaglitazone was a promising superhero in the world of diabetes medications. This drug was designed to help people with type 2 diabetes by improving their body's use of insulin. But as rosaglitazone went about its heroic duties, it started showing some villainous side effects. Doctors and researchers noticed that patients taking rosaglitazone had a higher risk of heart problems, especially heart attacks and heart failure. The superhero suddenly started causing more trouble than good, making it the sidekick that you wouldn't want to hang around you. In 2010, the situation got severe enough that the FDA slapped a black box warning on it, which is the FDA's way of saying this drug was dangerous but not exactly banned. The warning was like a flashing red light warning you that it had heart-related risks. The growing heart-related issues with this drug forced the FDA to restrict it even further in 2013, only allowing it for patients who couldn't take other medications or who were already benefiting from it. The European Medicines Agency, on the other hand, has banned rosaglitazone outright in the EU because being able to eat cake by overcoming diabetes wasn't worth it if a heart attack could kill you on the spot. Phenacetin Phenacetin is like Tylenol's evil twin brother, who's also great at treating fevers and pain, but was so troublesome that it got banned from the medical world. The part that stood out the most was the fact that this drug was linked to kidney damage. Taking phenacetin would put you at risk of developing a condition called analgesic nephropathy, a fancy term for kidney damage caused by overuse of painkillers. Over time, this could lead to kidney failure, which would put you on a long wait list of people waiting for a kidney donor. Then there's the cancer connection. Studies started showing that long-term use of phenacetin was associated with an increased risk of certain cancers, particularly bladder cancer. It turns out that one of its breakdown problems Products, which is created when your body processes the drug, was a carcinogen, or a cancer-causing substance. This raised major red flags for health authorities, so with these health risks becoming more apparent, health organizations decided it was best to ban phenacetin, giving the spotlight to Tylenol, which was just as good at treating pain and fever without the added problem of looking for an extra kidney in the market. Binoxaprofen 
Taking binoxaprofen was a lot like selling your soul to the devil to feel like you have young and healthy joints again, because while it could help relieve pain from aching joints and sore muscles, it demanded you give up your liver and overall health in exchange. Binoxaprofen was initially introduced in the 1980s as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, or NSAID, which treated arthritis and other pain-related problems without the need for stronger medications. However, things didn't take long to show its dark side. While binoxaprofen was very effective, it could give you seriously unpleasant side effects, including liver damage and even some allergic reactions that gave you skin rashes so severe they looked like you just survived a burning building. This drug could also make you sensitive to sunlight. Imagine taking medication to help with arthritis, only to avoid the sun like a vampire. As these serious side effects became more widely known, the risks of using binoxaprofen quickly outweighed any potential benefits. You wouldn't want to have healthy joints at the cost of liver failure and sunlight allergy. Basically, binoxaprofen got banned because the deal with the devil was too much for anyone who valued healthy livers and sunbathing more than knees that didn't hurt with every step you take. Pemeline. If you're suffering from Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, then Pemelin is the drug that stimulates your brain to help it stay alert and focused, like that Red Bull you take before an all-nighter for work. When all other treatments for ADHD didn't work, Pemelin was like the break glass in case of fire drug that doctors prescribed because of its effectiveness. But there's a reason why that's no longer the case today. Over time, patients were not only coming back to doctors to have their ADHD treated, but also to complain about liver problems. It turned out that there was a connection between Pemelin use and liver conditions, like hepatitis and liver failure. The worst part about Pemelin is that it didn't always warn you that your liver was already overloading. Normal liver damage symptoms like jaundice, a yellowing of the skin and eyes, dark urine, and abdominal pain don't show up until you realize that your liver is already on its last legs. By then, it was already too late to give your liver a breather. Its other side effects were not as bad, but were still quite annoying. You'd be losing your appetite and have serious mood swings, like a teenage girl in the middle of her period. As a stimulant, it could also keep you up late at night, counting a million sheep in your effort to go to sleep. Cereva Statin. Let's say you can't get enough of your daily breakfast of bacon and eggs, and your heart is beating hard from all that cholesterol. Here comes Cereva Statin, ready to keep that cholesterol level down and make your heart work without problems. It works by inhibiting an enzyme in the liver responsible for producing cholesterol. But while that sounds like a win-win situation, the drug's glory days only lasted until 2001 when it got banned. Imagine this drug as the employee of the year in the statin family. It works much better than any of its peers, capable of cranking up its productivity to turbo speed. That means it lowered cholesterol levels more effectively than almost any other statin on the market, but the side effects were a bit too much to consider keeping this star employee around. Found to have a significant risk of causing a serious muscle disorder called rhabdomyolysis, which is like the body's version of a catastrophic meltdown. Muscle fibers start breaking down rapidly, releasing a protein called myoglobin into the bloodstream. This might not sound too bad at first, but myoglobin can be a first-class ticket to the afterlife, especially when it reaches your kidneys and causes them to fail. Unfortunately for cerevastatin, the numbers were stacking up. Over 100 deaths worldwide were linked to its use. And when the reports started rolling in, it became clear that this drug was causing rhabdomyolysis more frequently and more severely than any other statin on the market. When health authorities started weighing the pros and cons and found that cerevastatin's positive effects on your heart couldn't justify a possible death from muscle meltdown, the drug got banned from the market. So you might want to take it easy on the bacon and eggs. Nimesulide. Nimesulide is that star player on a basketball team, in that it started putting on highlight performances as an NSAID before it got benched by the medicine world for some serious foul play. This drug is like ibuprofen because it handles arthritis, pain, and menstrual cramps like a pro. On paper, it looked like the player you'd want on your team because it's effective, fast-acting, and not too different from any other NSAID, but it's also like that hot-headed star who tends to cause many injuries on the basketball court. The main issue with nimesulide, the star player, was its tendency to cause liver problems. It wasn't even long-term use. A lot of people experienced acute liver failure after short-term use, making it clear that this drug had some serious attitude issues. If your star player has bad behavior or always fouls an opposing player, you'll suspend him. 
For nimesulide, the trouble was liver damage. Reports started piling up about people experiencing severe liver issues after taking the drug, and that's a major red flag in the medical world. So to keep the game fair and safe for everyone, the FDA and other regulatory agencies decided to pull nimesulide off the market. It was like kicking a troublemaker out of the league to prevent further chaos, ensuring that players on the team of medicine stay healthy and avoid any unexpected injuries. Pipamperone Pipamperone was a celebrity during the 1960s when doctors were only starting to discover that drugs could be effective at treating psychiatric conditions. If you had symptoms of schizophrenia or other related conditions, you'd say goodbye to that gruesome lobotomy when you can just use pipamperone. As an antipsychotic, this drug manages symptoms of mental health conditions. It was designed to help with things like hallucinations or delusions. If you had a delulu phase where you thought you'd get noticed by your favorite Korean pop sensation, then pipamperone can help snap you back to reality. But that's not all it did. This drug has a large roster of unwanted side effects. It can lead to significant weight gain, which you might not be too happy about if you're looking to be the star of the beach this summer. This drug also comes with metabolic problems that can lead to diabetes diabetes, and heart issues. Then there's the risk of extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS, the motor control issues that can cause tremors, stiffness, and restlessness. In severe cases, this can develop into a condition called tardive dyskinesia, which involves repetitive, involuntary movements, as if an evil spirit took control over some of your body parts. Ramonabint. If you're looking for an all-in-one medication that not only helps you lose weight but also controls diabetes, then Ramonabint should have been at the top of your list until it got banned. This drug works by blocking the cannabinoid receptors in the brain, which are the same ones activated by cannabis, that same leafy drug that gives you the munchies in the middle of the night. The idea was that by blocking these receptors, you'd feel less hungry and thus eat less, leading to weight loss. And if you're less likely to crave ice cream and cake, it would be easier to control your blood sugar level. But while you'd lose weight effectively using this drug, Ramonabint can have some serious side effects that could make you literally lose your mind. It targets the endocannabinoid system, which isn't just about appetite, but also regulates mood and emotions. Think of the endocannabinoid system as the brain's internal chill-out system. It helps you feel relaxed and balanced. When Ramonabin blocks the receptors in this system, it will make you experience severe mood changes, depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts. So even if you're the sexiest person on the beach, it's all pointless if you suddenly get depressed out of nowhere. When health authorities noticed that the negative effects were far too severe to ignore, they suspended the approval of Ramonavint. After all, those six-pack abs you get from your weight loss journey shouldn't come with a side of psychiatric disorders. Metamizal. Imagine you're at a magic show and the star is a magician named Metamizal. He asks you to volunteer for his next trick and tells you he can make your headaches disappear. With a wand flick, he makes your fever and pains vanish. But there's a price for this magic trick. Metamizal is known for its potential to cause a rare but dangerous condition called a granulocytosis. That's a fancy term for when your white blood cell count drops dangerously low, leaving you vulnerable to infections. That's because it can mess with your bone marrow, where these cells are made, by directly damaging the marrow or triggering an immune response that destroys the cells. It's like having a security system at home that suddenly stops working, making you an easy target for burglars. In this case, the burglars are infections. Moreover, metamizal has a bit of a reputation for causing severe allergic reactions, which isn't ideal when you're trying to relieve pain. Imagine taking a medicine to feel better, only to end up with a rash or other allergic symptoms instead. You're trading one illness for another. Taking this drug is also like buying a used car with a questionable track record because it doesn't have a good history in terms of its long-term safety. Sure, you might get from point A to point B, but you're risking a breakdown along the way. In this case, metamizal might eliminate your headache, but it could potentially cause long-term damage, leading to its eventual banishment and restrictions from medicine cabinets worldwide. Mibefordil. Mibefordil is like that newcomer in your school. He's trying to impress everyone by looking cool and doing a lot of impressive stuff, such as helping with high blood pressure and easing chest pains. But you didn't know that this kid had a secret bad side that eventually got him expelled. Essentially, this drug was effective at what it did. It works by relaxing your blood vessels and lowering your heart rate to ease symptoms of high blood pressure. The problem is that it doesn't play well with the other kids in school. When mixed with other medications, Mibefordil interacted in the worst way possible, causing dangerous complications that could cause a dangerous drop in blood pressure or heart issues. It's like how you mess up one ingredient in your recipe and turn the entire dish into a nightmare. One of the major issues was that Mibefordil interfered with the way the body processes other drugs. 
This led to dangerously high levels of those other drugs in the bloodstream, increasing the risk of severe side effects. In short, Mebefordil messed everything up for everyone else in school. Due to these issues, regulatory agencies like the FDA decided to keep Mebefordil away from school premises, expelling the drug and putting it on the blacklist. The ban was a way to protect patients from causing a deadly concoction between Mebefordil and other drugs, especially if they didn't know that this drug had a bad habit of not playing well with others. Gatafloxacin Let's say you're suffering from a bad respiratory infection that's kept you sneezing and coughing for days. Gatafloxacin used to be one of the best at getting rid of those nasty sniffles. Or if you've had too much coke to drink and you're suffering from a urinary tract infection, it's a great antibiotic to use. But it's now a relic of the past because it was so powerful that it was impossible that it didn't have a dark side. This drug can cause a condition called hypoglycemia, which is basically when your blood sugar drops too low. Imagine trying to enjoy a meal and then suddenly feeling faint or dizzy. That's what happens when you lack a bit of sweetness in your blood. This side effect was particularly troubling because it could be dangerous for people with diabetes or other health issues. On top of that, gatafloxacin could mess with your tendons. Tendons are like the rubber bands of your body because they help connect muscles to bones and are crucial for movement. But gatafloxacin had a knack for causing tendon damage, leading to conditions like tendonitis or even ruptures. You're playing a basketball game, but your knee suddenly buckles up because of a ruptured tendon. While not life-threatening, tendon problems can interfere with your way of life, especially if you want to be the next LeBron James. Another issue was that gatafloxacin could affect the central nervous system, potentially leading to problems like confusion, hallucinations, or seizures. So while you're recovering from that ruptured knee tendon, you'll be hallucinating in the hospital thanks to this drug. That's why it's no wonder it got banned from the market, especially if other antibiotics are much safer. Fenfermin Fenfermin is like an evil wizard in Harry Potter who started as an innocent good guy but turned out to be a sinister sorcerer who wants to take over the world. And he does it by casting his secret spell, Lactic Acidosis, which sounds like an actual Harry Potter spell, but is a serious condition in your body. Under normal circumstances, Fenfermin effectively treated or managed type 2 diabetes. It worked by helping the body use insulin more effectively. But because of lactic acidosis, your body builds up more lactic acid in the blood, leading to symptoms like rapid breathing, muscle pain, and confusion. The main problem was that fenfermin increased the risk of lactic acidosis to a point where it became a real concern. It wasn't just a small chance of suffering this condition because it was becoming an expected side effect for people under this medication. Sometimes it was quite severe and it was life-threatening. The high-risk, low-reward situation with fenfermin meant that it was too dangerous to keep on the shelf. It was wreaking so much havoc that the authorities needed to step in. So just like many dark wizards who cast dangerous spells, got sent to the Azkaban of drugs as a banned medicine and has been replaced by nicer drugs that are just as effective at treating diabetes, minus the lactic acid buildup. Then Metrazine. You're in the 1950s, and the population is set to boom, with people making babies left and right. You realize that you need to look great to find that perfect partner to make babies with, and that's why you start using Phenmetrazine, an effective diet pill. As you continue using it, you realize that you're no longer a fitness addict, but an actual addict. Phenmetrazine was developed in the 1950s as a stimulant that kept your energy high and your appetite low. That made it a fad in fitness when people tried to look their best by shedding those unwanted post-war pounds. It turned out, however, that it was very similar to amphetamines, which are known to cause addiction. The drug had a habit of creating a bit of a buzz, but not the good kind. When you start using it, you can't easily stop because it creates a euphoric feeling that can get you hooked. The addiction was already bad enough, but the side effects were worse. You can feel jittery, anxious, and paranoid. It's like you can't relax because you feel like someone is following you and ready to jump on you at any moment. You can't have a relaxing day because you're constantly on high alert. Floshequinin It probably wasn't effective if you're suffering from a broken heart, but floshequinin was one of the best drugs for treating heart failure. As a vasodilator, a medicine designed to help widen blood vessels and improve blood flow, it was supposed to keep patients alive, but ended up doing the opposite instead. The drug works by opening extra lanes in your heart's congested highway so that traffic, or blood in this case, can move more smoothly. It was supposed to improve quality of life, especially if you're showing symptoms of heart failure. Soon after its release, however, the drug started showing a troubling pattern. It was killing a lot of patients, making doctors wonder why a drug that was supposed to keep you alive had a high chance of unaliving you. 
The problem was that the drug worked a bit too well. By dilating the blood vessels too much, it could lead to sudden drops in blood pressure. This, combined with the heart's already struggling status, created a risky cocktail. Imagine trying to pump water through a hose that's suddenly three times wider than expected. It's a lot of strain on the pump, which is the heart in this case. Your heart needs to pump more blood to fill the wider lane. Flochiquinin was also likely to cause severe complications, including sudden cardiac death. So, by 1993, the manufacturer realized that this cure was worse than the disease itself, forcing them to withdraw the drug from the market. Essentially, flochiquinin went from hope to nope.